Excellent. Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruaz. I'm a designer at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. Pedro's Creative Tech here at Adafruit. Adafruit, Adafruit. And every week we're here to share 3D print projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. You said it well, Adafruit. You can say yeah. however you like, but welcome everybody to the show. We're live streaming. If you'd like to join us during the show, we have a, a live. Oh, now I'm messing up. We have a live. <laughs> A we, channel that you can tune into. It's a Discord server, and the invite code for that is discord.gg slash Adafruit. We're hanging out in the live broadcast chat room, and we'll take a moment to, to welcome everybody hanging out with us this morning. Thank you, folks, for joining us That's here. That's right. We're hanging out in the YouTube chat on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, and like you said, Discord. Giving out shout outs to everybody hanging out. We got Katney, Let's Hello. DIY, Liz. Liz. We got Mr. Certainly Bruce. Jim Hendrickson, Don Jim. K, Andy Calliway, all hanging out in all of the chats. Thank you all for joining us this lovely morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are tuning in all around the world. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out. Let's go ahead and jump into housekeeping. Okay. Well, uh, if we go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the deals that are going on. So let me uh, do that right now. Slash free. What's going on this week? I don't know, so we, so we go. All right, it looks like the 100 days of masking has, has it's over, so yay. I'm glad Ooh. we were able to get all those out to everybody. Hope. I am still wearing my mask. Of course, what do you mean? <laughs> we just in the middle of training my one-year-old to wear his mask, so this will continue for, oh, yeah. for all indoor spaces. For sure, and outdoor like gatherings. All right, <laughs> let's say so. Orders for ninety nine dollars or more, you're still getting that Perma Proto half size breadboard. For orders that are one forty nine or more, you get the half size Perma Proto plus a randomly selected STEM IQT board. And if you are registered with Adafruit, well, make sure you don't get the same one twice or thrice. Uh, for orders that are two ninety two hundred or more, you get the free randomly selected STEM IQT, the Perma Proto, and free UPS ground shipping. Now that's for U.S. continental only. For orders that are two ninety nine or more, you get the free UPS Continental shipping, the STEM IQT board, and the Perma Proto half size red port, and the Circuit Playground Express. Wonderful. Adafruit.com slash free. You can see all the details there and read about them um, while well, supplies last. But uh, yeah. OK, and then for the newsletters, once a week, there's a newsletter that's focused on products. You go to Adafruit.com slash newsletter to subscribe to that one. And then for the daily dose, the daily digest of Adafruit stories, community news, and whatnot, go to adafruitdaily.com and choose the categories that are uh, that are in your interest, such as we got things like uh, Python on hardware, IoT monthly, 3D printing, biohacking, maker business, <laughs> and more. Whew. All right, and that is the daily newsletters. Um, which would help wanted to get a jobs board. Are you looking for your dream job? Go to jobs.adafruit.com. You can find out all the different uh, openings that are there. If you are an employer looking for maker employees, um, you can post up a, uh, a thing. And if you are a maker with some skills, why don't you put up your, uh, your kind of resume and your skills? Um, yeah, you can do that. It's free to do so as well. Jobs.adafruit.com. That's the site. All right, I'm going to jump back over to Discord and say hello. And let's keep going on the show. Yeah, we're gonna try this other mic instead of the wired mic or the wireless mic. So. Oh, you want me to switch that? I it, it's working now, so I figure we let it go until the mic is 
broken again. All right, sorry. Let's go ahead and continue on with the rest of the show. <laughs> Audio problems, folks. Thanks for bearing with us. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's Learn Guide. Oh. Yeah, so if you go over to learn.adafruit.com, we have our lemon keypad. It's available, so check it out. Um, yeah, so the Learn Guide walks you through uh, Hold up. Let's uh, let's talk about what this is. It's a All macro right. keypad in the shape of a lemon. So instead of doing a grid type layout, you're doing a circular keypad. Yeah, it's a really fun uh, looking case, and it uses uh, Cherry MX compatible uh, switches. So under under these little 3D printed caps that you can pop off, you can see that there are some Cali white uh, keys in here. They are Cherry MX compatible. They have like the same footprint. Uh, so that's really nice. And these are little 3D printed keycaps um, that snap fit into the little stems. Um, these are really nice switches. Uh, they're clicky and they're white, so you can diffuse them really well. Like they, they illuminate really well. It's a snap fit enclosure. So uh, no kind of custom PCB, it's just free wiring here. So we got all the ground connections wired there, the wiring directly into the pins. We got a couple, there's six keys here. And um, there's about eight, I think, GPIO pins on the Cutie Pi. This is the cutest board. It has the new RP2040 chip, <laughs> which is from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And to light it up, I have here this seven NeoPixel jewel. So you got seven NeoPixels here uh, to play with. And you also have that, the I squared C port here, the Stemma port, Stemma QT. So if you wanted to add some sensors or something, uh, I squared C, peripheral to it, it is super easy to do so because with the connector, you just plug it in. Awesome. These are silicone wires, our favorite type of wires. They're really strong, really flexible, and great for this type of project. Click, 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 click. Yeah. So let me take it apart. I mean, it's not dual extruder or anything. You can just pop this out. So here is the sort of lemon bit. And then these components themselves also pop out. They just kind of pop out. So here's the bottom. If you wanted to uh, use a different board, like a feather, I also have a feather version, which is this right here. And you're wondering, oh, cool, that's the feather. Where's the spot for the NeoPixel jewel? Well, the feather has a NeoPixel built into it. Whether it's the RP2040 or the M4, you got a nice NeoPixel already built into it. So that simplifies the build. But as uh, you might think, this is a little bit overkill for such a simple project. You get all this awesome GPIO, you're not really using it all. But I figured maybe folks want a feather version and you have that. You're just gonna use some screws and some uh, hex nuts to keep this down here to mount it to those built-in standoffs there. Um, but yeah, it is a modular design and you can make your own bottom piece. If you wanna put a, a Nano or something else uh, that you, you just kinda have laying around, you could do that too. Maybe you can even fit a Raspberry Pi W, I don't know, but it'd be a little overkill for a keypad, but hey, there you go. So interesting thing about this uh, bit here is that uh, there's a texture on it, and that's not actually modeled in the, uh, the STL and the, in the geometry. That's not actually a part of the real geometry. It's actually really smooth, like this. This is normally what it comes out like. Um, so the way you can get this fuzzy skin is it's a feature in Cura called fuzzy skin. And uh, we have a layer by layer show you how to do that. So um, you have some options now uh, with the latest version of Cura. You can now uh, specify that you just want the fuzzy skin on the outside. For this particular pin, if you had, if I had fuzzy skin on the inside, well then this wouldn't fit anymore. So it's really nice that you can enable that feature and get your smooth geometry on the inside of your parts. So if you're doing something that's practical, um, check that out. You can now um, make, uh, you can now apply the fuzzy skin with a little bit more uh, options and just like fuzzy skin the whole thing, right? Um, so that's a, a little look at the fuzzy skin. Another interesting bit is um, in the layer by layer, I walk through kind of problem solving and some things to look out for. Namely, um, when you uh, were to print this geometry, see how this is open? This opening here is actually a part of the STL, part of the model, and when you print it um, with the fuzzy skin, it actually doesn't know that this, that this is the outside. Because if it's an open area, it, it treats this whole area as a, uh, as a outer skin. So it adds it to it, which really would mess up these little nubs. It's really critical to snap fitting 
the bottom piece. Uh, so what I ended up doing was making sort of a sacrificial layer where this is how you print it. You actually close off this area, the opening. So if you have a model and it has an opening, close it off and then cut it out later. It's a thin enough wall where you can just use a hobby knife or an X-Acto knife and just trim away at that opening. So that's the thing that I kind of had to do. Um, it's kind of like this sacrificial support layer. Otherwise, all of this would be fuzzy and it just the tolerances wouldn't work out. So uh, there's uh, what it looks like once you've cut it out. Of course, you can sand it down and stuff, but uh, I just kind of neglected to do that. But yeah, it's a real, really cool feature um, for uh, the outer surface of your part. Now, this isn't going to work on like this sort of thing. Like this top and bottom surfaces don't get that fuzzy skin. It's only for things that have Z. Uh, the, the stuff in the Z height, right? That's a good point. Yeah, and then this little core bit here, it's printed in, um, so there's three pieces here, right? You got this top cover that kind of covers this area, and you have this little bit here that's the key plate, and this also press fits and snap fits out. Uh, so you really have quite a few pieces here. Um, this little plate here uh, is printed in a translucent uh, filament so that the light can shine through it, because I'd like to have it, uh, you know, I like to have it illuminate. So you can use some translucent uh, filament to, to make the, the light shine through here. All right. Now these keys right here, they just pop out. They have these little built-in tabs. They do pop out, but because they're soldered, um, you know, be careful, you can't fully pop them out. Um, they're only gonna pop out one way and they pop in this way. So really easy to install, but once you've soldered it in, um, you'll have to desolder it or solder it uh, if, you, uh, if you wanna take it out. But yeah, it's just your standard, um, your standard, what would you call it? Cherry MX compatible shape, uh, 10 by 10 millimeters or whatever. Uh, but yeah, any questions, any comments? Let's see here. Uh, One of the things, uh, anything, no? Yeah, texture. Texture reminds them of a tennis ball and a perfect for the lemon. Yeah, and so then... let's try to focus here on the uh, camera. Hold that for me while I open up webcam tools. I had to restart the whole system, so that's why I'm a little off here. Let us do manual focus. All right, bring that closer. So a textured, a powder-coated PEI flex plate. Is that the name of this mm -hmm. thing? That's what you can do to get this, uh, this really awesome texture um, on the bed of your 3D printer. So that works really well for the first layer of your prints. Uh, we've been really liking our flexi plate. You can get them from various suppliers, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's combined with the fuzzy skin, you get uh, some really, really nice textures. Um, yeah. So check out that flexi plate if you want to get this super cool texture on your prints. I don't know how else to show it. Like, it looks really cool. Doesn't it look like fruit somehow? A little bit, kind of. <laughs> Maybe so. Anyway, um, another thing about uh, this project that I kind of forgot to, to mention is that, um, what would you say, like the word, how do you tell these keys apart? <laughs> so I'm using it as a media controller. It's uh, so uh, to, to, to play Spotify or YouTube or iTunes or whatever music player. Um, those are consumer controls is what they're called in the library. So this is using the CircuitPython USB HID library. And a part of that um, has special Consumer controls for doing volume, mute, all of those consumer controls, that's what, they're, that's what they are. Um, so how do you tell them apart? Well, I made some labels, and I didn't get to print them because we're a little bit of a mess here, but um, I, there's a sticker pack from Pyramony that has these little media icons, and they're perfect for this. I just stick them on there. This is mute, that's a little skull. But volume up, volume down, play, pause, forward, next. And uh, that's, that's one way you can do it. And one of the things I found funny is like, Pyramony sticker packs is the only ones that are doing these kind of media icons. I feel like there's a lot to do there. Like if, if I was looking on Amazon for like sticker packs and for, for the icons, cause like I didn't want to vinyl cut it. Um, but thankfully uh, I had the sticker pack from Pyramony and it would, hey, there you go, you can have your, uh, you have your media icon labels there. So the idea was to create some 
some vinyl decals. Um, but I just didn't have the time. But hey, we got a sticker pack for Pyramony, right? I was also release one that has the embossed uh, individual icons on each one. You could do that, yeah. I have not uh, done that, but you could totally do that. You really have to. There you go. Look at the uh, at the stem when you're putting when you're pop popping these things in to make sure the orientation is right. But hey, there you go. Cool. So I'm just putting this back together, and then this key plate. Once all that's set up, it goes through the core, which I call the core. And then you line up these little um, these little notches here. Line up with these nubs, and this keeps it from like spinning once it's inside. And then there's a ledge right there with a 45 degree chamfer so that it can print without any support material. And that ledge will keep the keypad from being pressed all the way down. That ledge was also applied to the inner skin here. So you can see how the skin has this ledge and that ledge can print because there's, it's printing from this bottom and there's, no, there's nothing, uh, nothing there. So that's a good kind of thing there for avoiding supports. So then this, this does kind of freely spin around in there so that you can order it however you like. Um, and that just press fits in there. And then the cover piece here is also printed in that white translucent uh, filament. It also has these notches on the lip and that lines up with those notches there on the core. So you can just kind of, you can either pop this out and then press all that together. And then just kind of click it all in there. All right, and then to install the components on the bottom, there are these little uh, reliefs here. These little spots here allow the wiring to pass through so that this can be flush, so that the PCB can be flush with these little kind of built-in holders. Um, so hopefully I can, I can do this without too much issue. So I kind of press those wires in there, press them over here, and just, I don't want to kink my wires, but this is a good reason to use silicone wires because uh, they're squishy. So there, that's popped in, and then this one gets inserted at an angle. There's this little bit here that catches the PCB so it doesn't pop out. So at an angle, fit it in there, and then just that, click that in there. And that should stay in spot. <laughs> oh no. I guess I gotta cut this open. Do we have any flush diagonal snips? Probably not. Nope. That's <clears> fine. <throat> Well, let me do that again. Any questions, anything? Just uh, uh, shout outs from Susan saying thanks for making all these snap together parts. Oh, of course, that's my jam. And then uh, Hugo suggesting doing the dual color, like switching out the uh, filament Ooh. midway, uh, like Liz did. Yeah, you could do some really fun color combos and make it look like a dual extruded thing by just swapping out that color. And then a little bit later in the prototyping section, we'll show how to actually just make cutouts so they can just press fit in. Uh, if you have geometry that uh, wouldn't allow you to uh, do a two or a filament swap midway through the print because of the uh, uh, the orientation of the print. Yeah. I put these rubber feet there at the bottom. We, we stocked those too. But yeah, now you have your labels and you can tell what's actually what. I want to put my music. I'm pretty sure and those aren't in the correct spot though. <laughs> right, but you can change it in the code, which is easy. We'll yeah. take a look at that Perfect. in a sec. Yeah. But hey, that's a, that's a demo of, of the thing. Mm -hmm. Let's jump into the learn guide. Our audio is still working. How awesome. Amazing. Yeah. And apologies, everybody can hear. So there's multiple things going on in the house oh, yes. right now. We, have, uh, we had a leak in our kitchen. So we were able to twist our insurance company's arm. So we went ahead and just redid our entire first floor. So there's going to be a lot of sawing, a lot of hammers and chiseling and removing flooring and painting. So here, all of that. In addition to it is lawn day in our neighborhood. So there's going to be a bunch of mowing. And uh, my one-year-old is in his toddler stage. So you will hear a lot of babies crying. Yeah, the squeaky toys as well. <laughs> a lot of squeaky toys. Yep, that's that's the kid, not the dog. He is uh, he's sleeping right here. <laughs> yeah. But and apologies for all of the crazy noise. As you can imagine, it is uh, uh, a little crazy at the house right now. <laughs> yeah, that's why we made eleven this week. <laughs> uh, there at. Um, and uh, we're coming up on one year of moving up here to Orlando, and there has not been one week that we have not had a contractor here at the house. Yeah. So it's definitely driving us crazy, but 
Let's go ahead and jump into, yeah, I let's think, take a look the, at the learn guide. code. Or learn. No, just the learn guide. Learn guide for this. Yeah, so I got some lovely photos. Check those out. My favorite drink is the Topo Chico with the twisted lime. Delicious. So that's why I did that. <laughs> Looking at the reviews for that, it's like, this is the holy grail of sparkling water. It is the best water. <laughs> Which is strange, because like, it's, it's like, Water from Mexico? I don't know if that's the, it doesn't sound the healthiest, but hey, we're still we're still here. So what's cool about the the, the mechanical switches is that um, we we stock like four different varieties, so you can pick whichever one you like. I'm using the white ones here because they're clicky and it just felt mm -hmm. right for this project. But you can choose whatever you like. Um, sign up to be notified when they're back in stock. But we have a nice product page that consolidates all of them, so you can click here: white, brown, red, and black. And uh, Lamar. In this product video, it talks about the feeling and the difference between them all. Um, but folks that are kind of enthusiasts, mechanical switch enthusiasts, already know the feelings and stuff. Yeah. And they know their Cali's and they know their Cherry Mexes. Wonderful. Um, yeah, it's just some nice photos of it, right? All right, so some prerequisite guides. Um, we have a learn guide that's dedicated for the RP2040. That's if you really want to go deep dive into the pinouts for the, uh, for the Cutie Pie RP2040 and whatever features and things. And then the LED animation library is its own thing. If you want to add more libraries, uh, you want to make it more interactive, depending on what you click on or something, definitely check out that Learn Guide by Catney. And then, of course, the NeoPixel Uber Guide. That's if you want to know all about NeoPixels. And then the CircuitPython HID keyboard and mouse. So this has a couple extra demo codes. If you want to turn this into a mouse, you want to turn this into a regular type of keypad, or maybe a macro keypad that has like combos and key combos, those uh, learn guys will have uh, some example code for that. This one doesn't quite do that, and I'll show you in a second here. So we have some things that are out of stock, like the RP2040 Cutie Pie. This was in stock last Tuesday, and there was like a mind-blowing 50% off sale by, by when JP did it on Tuesday. Uh, so <laughs> uh, thanks for everybody. Uh, they're making more. They're making more. Copping those as quick as you can. This is a great little little board. I keep refreshing my cart. Me too, because I need some. Every some. other hour. <laughs> I only have two. I only built two of these. Uh, so we have a NeoPixel Jewel. Uh, you can get that one out into the stock. Again, sign up for the Cali switches when they're back. Um, for the silicone wires, like we have these nice spools of silicone wire. And the product page, like you can pick what colors you want, which is really nice. But I definitely recommend getting the spool. And um, once you've collected them all, you can print out or wire spool carousel. <laughs> Great, great wire. It's 30 gauge wire and, like I said, strong, flexible, good for these type of projects. Um, you don't need the uh, the black nylon screws if you're not doing the feather. <laughs> I forgot that I linked that there, but hey, it's all good. Uh, the rubber feet, we sell rubber feet. Wonderful. Some other kind of paraphernalia type stuff, heat shrink tubing, solder wire, solder wire, um, a soldering iron, helping third hands, all the good stuff, right? All right, let's go to the circuit diagram. Um, so to, to build our circuit diagrams, you use fritzing. It's like open source software. You can pay 10 bucks or something for it. And then um, or our parts. Or yourself. Yeah, for our parts, um, you can grab the Adafruit boards uh, from the GitHub repository. And it's a bit of a library for these fitching parts. So you can drag and drop and create um, wired connections really easy with the fritzing software. And shout out to JP uh, for his Contributions, I think, to the Cherry MX switches. I pulled them out of his Pico mm -hmm. keyboard, and I was like, "Wow!" Because you know, I didn't want to redraw that. But really nice that you have this uh, part, and you can download our fitting file and um, pull it from there. So that's good. Um, for accessibility purposes, we always like write out the, the the wired connection. So that's pretty much what you're looking at here. You can you can use whatever um, pin you want. Um, you just need to specify it in the code, which we'll walk through in a minute here. CircuitPython page just walks you through installing CircuitPython. The bootloader and all the CircuitPython boards make it really easy to install. Double tap reset, puts it in bootloader mode, plug it into your computer, and then drag and drop a UF2 file. You download the UF2 file uh, from the link here. Or maybe not that link. <laughs> One of the links. And then um, you get uh, the latest version of CircuitPython. CircuitPython.org, go to Downloads, and you can see all the boards here that, uh, that support CircuitPython. So for CutiePie, we've got all the CutiePies, but the 2040 is the one you want, right? And then uh, 6.2 is the latest. OK, go. So, this, uh, so here's the code. Um, it's using the project bundle. So you can now just click the project bundle 
button and it gives you the libraries and, and, and any assets if it had any. And this one doesn't have any images or anything, so you're just going to get the, the libraries and the code. But it makes it a lot easier to just drop that into your folder there because you just get everything instead of having to hunt down the libraries. Yeah. Um, so that's nice. And it helps us write guides easier too because now we kind of don't have that extra. Here's like a whole explanation of the library bundle. Mm -hmm. We kind of can omit that. And if people want to dive deeper, we'll have pre wikizit guides in the beginning. Um, but yeah, let's take a look here. So we have the USB HID library that we're importing, NeoPixel, and then the um, a part of the USB HID library is this consumer control and consumer codes. And then for the LED animation library, I'm using Pulse and Solid, and I'm kind of switching between those. Also, I'm using the group and the animation group and the animation sequence. That way, I can um, call two different NeoPixel or you make two different NeoPixel objects. And it's like, why do you need two NeoPixel objects? Because there's actually a NeoPixel on the Cutie Pie. Now it's not bright, it's not super bright, it's really small, but it's still enough to like change up the color. So I basically I'm just saying, hey, I need to turn that pixel off, the internal NeoPixel, right? So you can use uh, NeoPixel or board.neopixel to specify uh, which pin it is, because I actually don't know. But with the board library, um, it's uh, you can just call it board.neopixel, and it's the internal NeoPixel. Yeah. Uh, so for the buttons, if you want to change out the pins, you can see here we have uh, it's A01, A1, A2, D8, and D9, and D10. Now, if you look at the board, they actually don't say that on the silk screen. So if you go to the Cutie Pie Learn Guide, um, there's a nice breakdown of the pins and what they are. You know what I mean? Like the SK, the, like the serial clock, MISO, and and MOSI, those are actually can be specified as a D pin, a digital pin, pinouts here. Scroll down, here you go, and then you can see that SDA is actually D4 and SLC is actually D5. So that's how you can use those um, kind of special pins as general purpose I.O. pins. So that's how you just have to tell in the code, hey, this is D6 or whatever. And in this one, I'm using SCK, MISO, and MOSI. So that's D9, D10, D8. But you could also use R, T, Rx and Tx, so that's great. You can use all of them as you like. All right, so that's what I'm doing there. And then for the actual key codes, um, they're written pretty uh, pretty nice, like uh, play and pause is self-explanatory, fast forward, volume increment would be volume up, you know, increase the volume. Mute is mute, volume decrement is to, to lower the volume, and then rewind is like, previous track also. Uh, but these are all um, listed, I think, in the read the docs, which I have linked down uh, lower in, in this. Um, and then you're, you're creating the, the object with this one. We're creating uh, an array of buttons. And then we're telling all the buttons that we want in this array to be a pull up, a pull up button and directional as an input. So that's what we're doing there. And then for the animation sequence, I'm just saying, hey, I want uh, the the NeoPixel jewel to slowly pulsate this white color. You could change the color if you want. And then the solid is just saying, I want to the NeoPixel, uh, the internal NeoPixel to be black, so I don't want it to kind of mix that green color. Because normally that internal NeoPixel is used to specify like the status of CircuitPython. Normally it's a like, green. And for this project, I just wanted to turn it off. So that's one way you can turn it off. Um, yeah, this is the first time I used the animation sequence and animation group. So I thought that was interesting. And then you got a little print statement here in the um, in the serial REPL in Moo, for example. It'll tell you, hey, I'm waiting for the key presses. And then when you press it, it'll tell you which key you pressed. And the loop, uh, we're animating the NeoPixel jewel. And then uh, we're checking for each button. If it's, if it's pressed, it'll, we'll print out uh, this button was pressed. And then we have our little uh, kind of get the corresponding key code here. And then uh, send the, the consumer control. And then we sleep for a little bit. Go. Cool. Um, this is uh, the circuit pie drive, what it looks like. Just those three uh, libraries, and uh, that's it. And the QDY is really great, the RP2040 one, because it has like eight megabytes of, spl of, of uh, a flash, so you can like add tons and tons of libraries. The whole bundle, if you like. And then uh, these, these learned guys here, there's the HID library for read the docs, if you really want to um, look at like the list of key codes and stuff. And then also there's that guide that I had in the prerequisites. And then this little block here just says, hey, if you want to change up the pins or the order, it's, it's uh, chronologically, so you would just change them how you like. 
Yeah, so A1, for example, would be uh, play pause. And then the last key is D10, which would be rewind. And that's the code in a nutshell, right? Project bundle, super yeah. easy. Yeah. One thing to note, uh, Liz is saying this also greatly benefits the uh, guide writers as well. For, for sure it does, yeah. Yeah, it really cuts all these things and hopefully it will make everyone's first time coding like, really easy. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other stuff, let us know. But I'm going to move on to the CAD files. This is the first guide where I broke up the 3D printing and CAD files into their own pages because there's a little bit of extra stuff to talk about here. Uh, normally, I just list out the STLs just so you know that they're there. Um, I have a download link to the zip file and a download link to the CAD source. The CAD source means like a step file and the Fusion 360 file, which is like what was created in. And then uh, I have a little bit of a CAD assembly um, GIF. It's just a nice visual way to see how all the pieces are broken out and they fit back together. Um, there's a little note here about printing the keycaps. I would advise to not print the whole set of keycaps. Print one first, mm -hmm. see what your tolerances are like, yeah. see what the quality is like, and then um, tweak as needed. Um, I found printing also printing um, a set. Some of them would actually have different tolerances. Yeah, that's what I was what about the hell? to say. Because uh, depending on what area of the bed print, of the bed that you set these up on, that can make the tolerance differences as well. For sure, so that's why I say just print one. Print one in the beginning, test fit that, and then maybe print the rest of them as one. And uh, hey, if you got different colors, you can do like a rainbow. Okay. And then this piece here shows a link to the GitHub repo, the QD pot, uh, three. Hey, what's up, folks? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, our audio finally broke out, so um, I switched to the switched to a different mic. So hopefully, hello, hello. Hey, what's up, folks? Yeah, let me bring the gain up a little bit, maybe. Take these things off. How's that? Hey, what's up, folks? Okay. Yeah, so the fuzzy skin tutorial is like a nice little ten-minute breakdown of like some things to look out for, and I also look at some other models. Um, that would look pretty cool with the fuzzy skin. So check that video out. I think you might get something out of that. So I talk about the fuzzy skin and make sure you use the uh, the fuzzy skin outside only. Uh, one thing I kind of forgot to, to mention is the CAD, the STL file in the name says no fuzzy skin. So if you don't want fuzzy skin, use that one because that one has that opening for the USB port and the fuzzy the skin dash fuzzy dot stl is the one that you should use the fuzzy skin with because it has that closed usb port that i showed earlier kind of that f sacrificial uh, layer okay so back into the 3d printing uh, we talked about the fuzzy skin texture keycaps i had a little bit of the thing here i didn't really link a pei flexible build page because they're, they're you can get them all over the place amazons and other suppliers and vendors um, so check that out, but at least have a note here about uh, getting that textured uh, surface on your keycaps. And then I already talked about printing the keycaps, right? Yeah. I guess I have that twice. Oh, <laughs> it's fine. All right, let's go to the wiring part. So for the wiring part, um, you know, nice photos that show you installing the keys into the uh, into the key plate. That's what it looks like. Or, or orientation doesn't really matter, you know. That's cool because it's like symmetrical. Uh, I got some wires. I also have some wire links, which is handy. That's really handy to have. Um, to uh, to share all the grounds, I ended up having to solder two wires to one pin and then just kind of daisy chaining them all like that. There's one long ground wire that needs to connect to the, uh, the NeoPixel jewel. Um, so then I walk through soldering all six switches, looking all nice. And then of course, once that's done, heat shrink tubing. Oh my God, heat shrink. I need a warning here that says, add your heat shrink tubing. I put that that little meme of uh, Gru. It was like, first it's solder, <laughs> yeah. then put, the anyway. So we got uh, the heat shrink tubing here. And then I'm using a ribbon cable for the NeoPixel jewel because I like my ribbon cables. Um, and a stick vise, why not? So 
What's cool about the NeoPixel Jewel is it has two ground pins. So I'm just kind of piggybacking off that available ground pin uh, for the switches. That way, because I only have one ground pin on the Cutie Pie, so I might as well use uh, the, the, the available pin on the NeoPixel for, for an extra ground pin, which is kind of cool. Yeah, and I just walked through wiring it. Here's what it looks like when it's wired. The, the, silt, the, the heat shrink tubing is on. Great. All right, so that's wiring up to the assembly. Uh, I just kind of showed it to you here, but uh, the, uh, the key plate gets press fitted into the core and then the cover fits over the core, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the, uh, the core fits into the skin. You pop in the NeoPixel jewel and the, the cutie pie into their spots. You pop in the bottom cover, line up those notches. And then I guess the last thing you can do is install the keycaps. Huzzah. And there's your lemon. Make some lemonade. This would make a great MIDI controller too. Any type of a keypad. Sweet. Right. So check out the awesome. learn guide. It's out there now, and the uh, files are also up on Thingiverse if you want to get them from there. But I also have them linked here. Um, yeah, and then uh, Yanni is saying that you could also ha have a custom PCB for those uh, Neo keys. So yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was actually really cool. that was actually the original idea yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We wanted to make it a little bit more accessible for people uh, who don't want to uh, mail out a PCB. Yeah, I think it, it, it's a really good modular way. Like I, I really wanted the feather one because it was so elegant. It was like it's just the feather and like the mm -hmm. NeoPixel's already built into it. Uh, but you could also use a circuit playground. You know, if you want to use a circuit playground, you would totally definitely good. recreate this whole bottom. But it's totally doable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think I'll see folks like remix this on Thingiverse. Like, oh, I put a Nano on here, like a $2 Nano or a SparkFun Pro Mini Micro something. Yeah. All right, just going through some of the comments here, just some chatter about uh, just the way that package uh, manager is working with Windows. <laughs> oh. Also made an orange one. And a lime, which I think is in the other, yeah, the other somewhere. Room, yeah, sorry. Wonderful. All right, awesome. Yay. The video for this will be out next, next week. week. So, Which gives um, us time to like kind of play with it. Maybe I can get those vinyl decals cut out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looks There's cool when it's bumps. glowing. And uh, of course you could change the color and do some fun stuff. Mm -hmm. I would open Moo, but I just updated to the beta four like this morning and like I'm afraid to open it. <laughs> Lemony lemon. Just checking the audio levels on this. Sounds okay. Yeah, it sounds good, huh? Cool. Maybe we'll just do this moving forward. We used to. We did for a while. We uh, chucked the uh, wireless mics, but oh. what's so annoying is that we just paid for Wirecast upgrade, mm -hmm. and so it's like, still messing up. It's still doing the exact same stuff. If it just that. burnt a two hundred dollar bill, and it would have been the exact same thing. <laughs> and we support. Um, we we thank everybody for helping us out there. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's what are you prototyping? Continuing the trend of the Trinky. Yeah. This DD Tiny, super cute. It's a, what is it? The Sam D print? Yeah, it's the Sam D uh, 21. 21. It is this M0. elegant little uh, USB key. Plugs right in, and you have these four nail pixels on there. So, of course, the, it has these two cap touch buttons on the top for some input. And of course, the first thing that everybody's doing is making a little flashlight with the light or the lipstick battery charger. I 3D printed a little case with it and wanted to jump back into using the conductive filament what? from uh, Protopasta on the back there. Mm. So it works pretty dang good. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. So That's it's super simple, not dual printed. This uh, is in separate pieces. You just press fit in the conductive part of this <laughs> and it just touches right up on the back of the little touchpad there that cool. works great that's cool then you also have your little built-in button on there if you want to reset that yeah or program it i guess to like, change colors i guess so you do that just goes red because you're in bootloader mode and taking a look at this little guy it is a press fit uh, little lid oh sorry oh i oh, don't know it's you confusing went. with the uh with microphone the mic. being over there that's funny Okay, so press fit a little lid for this guy. So this comes off like that. And then we have a little uh, ledge on the side there that is holding it in place, pops right out. And then you can see where the um, capacitive touch 
uh, little buttons are on there. So this filament is from Protopasta, and we did do a couple of tests uh, several years ago on uh, brands that were uh, releasing their conductive filament, and the Protopasta one was uh, the best. I think the, the most conductive, yeah. or with, with the least resistance. That's the last one standing, too. Oh, yeah. So you can kind of see there that I do have these, uh, uh, what is it, a little bit taller than what it is, just so you can easily feel on what button does what so small man yeah Jeez. so if i pop one, yeah it's super how small you, how long does it take to print like a minute uh, it's like five minutes so if wow. i just pop one of these guys off you can see it's it's so teeny tiny <laughs> and you can just press fit it so this is what, we're, what we were talking about earlier uh what you could do if you have geometry uh that you can't uh sort of swap filament colors mid through because mm -hmm. there's no way to do this it's, it's a flat part and it needs so, to be raised and it needs to be raised so you need to uh you know, have a different part that you can just press fit into place and oh my god it's so tiny you can't even get it back in there <laughs> see if we can do that live demo there you go cool <laughs> pops right in so just a little bit of uh working with the tolerances on that and then having this little uh built-in button not fuse and then having the correct height right. for that so we release this as a uh, little video on introducing the neo trinky and all the trinky keys mm -hmm. we'll do some nice little cases for all these yeah Oh, you have to make sure they're pressed down? Yeah, press down so it'll fit in there. And it's just guy slides in yeah, like that. Yeah, I heard that click. It's a click. Very and cool. I get some stats of this guy going back in. You can just line up to where the buttons are on that. Oh, uh, yeah, the reset. So satisfying yeah. click. Goes in. And then one of the things we've uh, noticed with having the, capa the capacitive touch uh, work, uh, we've seen you know demos where people are trying to tap on it and it's not working. It's because of how often we're washing our hands. They're completely dry. Yeah. So you have to have like, I don't know, like some, you know, when you like build up a little bit of sweat on your finger or condensation, maybe condensation or maybe blow on your finger and that will greatly, oh, look, I just did it there. I just lick my finger. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. It, I'm just kidding. I accidentally did that with um, like eating while I was testing this out and yeah, it, it, it's disgusting. Don't do that. <laughs> You can, like, taste oh, it. Um, Yanni just had a question here uh, on on uh, come on man <laughs> on Discord. Like, could you tr could you make it so like the buttons are positioned on the top? Yes, I think that, you can kind of channel them in different areas. You, you stole what I was gonna do. Yeah, that oh. is exactly what I'm working on. <laughs> Good so job, this, Yanni. Yeah, so this is going to lead up to the top there because that's, that's one cool. of the things that you can't do right now. You don't yeah, have access. Right to the top of yeah, that. Repositioning. So you can have to wrap around yeah. so you can push on the top here. So that's the, yeah. uh, took a little bit to get all the tolerances right, sure. but yeah. now that I have all that down, I am moving on to uh, relocating, or not relocating, but just having it wrap around so that's you do cool. have access to it on the top there. Yeah. But yep, that is coming up. You uh, read my mind. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> Good job, Ronnie. And then again, uh, like I was saying, uh, I think I've seen that the most capacity, uh, the cap capacity or capacitance yeah whatever the most capacitance in it's like fingertip. right in this area not your tip, not tip it's huh? like right on the um i don't know the center of your finger yeah. is what uh is able to read it a lot more sweet as you can see there cool you know what would be really cool with this and you can tap you it can, too you can just tap yeah to the... so this is the demo code that ships with it it's written in arduino and it's more of a kind of it's a demo code it's more for light show and yeah, stuff yeah. and to show that the cap touch stuff works but if you wanted to turn this into a useful USB controller, maybe something that can mute or quit your Zoom meetings. Yeah, Liz has an excellent guide on just that. Exactly. It just uh, got published, uh, I think, later yesterday, I but think, yeah, the yeah. morning you know, there was a blog post. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Liz. You can check, check this out now if you got yourself a new Trinky. Um, in the code, she walks through um, all the things that she has there. Excellent. Like setting up the, the, the touch stuff, the colors, state machines for checking if something got touched or not and each um kind of key command has a color so you can tell and it's used as an indicator to know what the what is it? like if it's red it's muted if it's green it's not muted and it's a really useful thing and they're all just kind of your common um alt t and alt q or alt v for nice. those key commands. so you can totally use this for whatever app maybe you want to use it for photoshop or something um, else, maybe uh, a key switcher type thing for like OBS. That'd be really cool. So yeah, check it out. The Great Escape is what uh, <laughs> this one's called for uh, 
control Q or yeah. Yeah, control Liz says it's a Q. zoom away from your zooms. Yes, <laughs> and then you get this super nice glow, like a rainbow glow when you quit the meeting. That's fun. So check it out. Really good use for this uh, Neo Trinky. And then uh, for me, I made a model of it. That's what I do. I made a thing model of it. Sounds uh, great. So this is from Lamar's uh, Eagle CAD file. You can grab that now. The learn guide was published either today or yesterday as well. So there's a learn yeah. guide for the Neo Trinky by uh, Katni. And uh, I pulled down the PCB files, brought it into Fusion, added these parts. You can grab these oh. from our GitHub repo linked in the description. Um, yeah, it's a little model. Uh, really simple. This is one of the simplest ones to put together. Just a couple caps. Um, SOT 23, 4, 30, 35, 35 new pixels. Yeah, so simple that I was able to make a mock-up one before you were able to get all those ready. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Just for uh, getting all the, you know, the heights of all the components. So yeah, the PCB sure is that... thicker. Oh, shit. The PCB is thicker, so this model might not be accurate. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I, I can change that, that in Fusion, my bad. Oh, yeah. man, I just no, realized that. I, the one I was using is one that I just mocked yeah. up myself that is, for yeah, all the heights. I forgot. You just look at what How funny. I did. All right. Can you? Oh, yeah, super can you, simple. Can little, you, uh, it's two millimeters, the thickness. Okay. okay. You're sure? Yeah, you can <laughs> measure it again, but that's what yeah. I remember from last yeah, night. Pretty much printing two. all these. It's pretty close to two. Yeah. <laughs> With the tolerance differences right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. your uh, printer. It's all good. It's two. <laughs> and then the only other thing to watch out for is the height of the button here so when it's clicking. Mm, yes. Okay. And let's see, I had a comment from the chat. Yeah, completely lost. Dang it. Sorry. Ask us again, what was the question? <laughs> no, just another uh, suggestion from Ken who's saying, yeah, uh, relocate it or uh -huh. wrap it around at the top. Yep, that is all I'll be working on after the show. Sweet. Yay. Oh, the thing I wanted to mention was because they, I don't think you have any of the images of what all of these Neo Trinky animals are, sort of oh, based yeah. off like Pokemon, so they're all like a creature. And I want to make this like a little jellyfish, sort of match what all of the characters are for each uh, Trinky board. Yeah, sorry, I can't, the, the base cam will, will not logged in. Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you'll see, tune in to Ask the Engineer tonight and you'll see yeah. all the new artwork. Yeah, there's a, the for there's the a yeah, they're gonna be like collectible mm -hmm. cards, like Pokemon cards. Right. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be so cool. Yeah. All right. So that is what we're prototyping, Neo Trinky, and they're in stock right now. How about I'll go that? pick some up before they're all gone? Let me refresh. I mean, they're, maybe they are gone. No, nope, they're still there. If Excellent. anybody has an idea for adding the little, um, I guess it's supposed to be like a keychain or something. I know it's supposed to be to split up. The, right, uh, the two. Yeah, the split the ring. Buttons. The split ring is what you would add to this. But that might that that'll probably totally interfere with the PCB, but not with a mm. different case. Right. I, I don't know what the use um, for that would be though. Having one on here, I guess just as a keychain or something. Mm. The uh, there's almost reminds of like a little face, and these are like little yeah, shades. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh, let's go ahead and match it to what the uh, each yeah. animal is. Neo Trinky. <laughs> it also reminds me of like the iPod uh, Shuffle. Oh yeah, the shape the iPod it. Shuffle. Yeah, it was just a USB stick. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you can make an iPad Shuffle. Yeah, it's a great idea. I, I think somebody actually did do that. I think John Park did a um, Seattle George is saying that uh, one of the touch buttons you can uh, have it be an SOS for campers or hikers, so it's like blinking red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really cool. good idea for that. Yeah, Lamar's kind of uh, ah, original. Yeah, uh, Yanni saying that uh, adding the buttons to the top, having it wrap around to the top, uh, have it do something with a wearable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or curves and around. Some, uh, easy access for yeah. that. Yeah, maybe we could pendant of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's Those what are great ideas. prototyping. Yeah, and uh, don't forget, you can get one now. They were on sale yesterday. I was like fifty percent off, like three dollars. <laughs> I was like, "What? Three dollars right? trinkets? Such an cool. awesome teeny tiny little board." Yeah, it's a great little one. I wasn't sure what we do with it, but hey, there we go. Yep. It's a great cases little... are uh, always a good thing. Yeah. Yep. All right, moving on to this week's community makes. Yay! It's run every Tuesday. We have a time lapse, and we print something from the community this week. There's a crab. This is so cool. So it's with, uh... The weather getting a little bit warmer, at least over here in Orlando. <laughs> yeah. 
Can you say like it was snowing in a couple of places? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is an excellent flexible uh, crab. We pull cool, a uh, couple of different parts for the uh, shell here. Very fancy way to connect the shell without having to use glue. I didn't show this on the video because I'm not able to like okay. take it apart, but it's sort of like a belt buckle the way that it connects together the pieces. Ah, and it floats. It floats. Yeah, excellent little pool toy. <laughs> I really wish I could have got those pool shots on the, on the uh, GoPro there, but I can kind of see that there. It's like a belt buckle type thing that like snaps in mm. and we could tell that like a pin thing yeah it's like a like a buckle like right two a buckle that, latch thing yeah like a latch okay cool. um the real thing though that is look at the colors how did you get that color so this is rainbow pla and it just happened to be right on the yellow and orange part to you know match <laughs> that matches really well it shows his belly i want to see his belly oh <laughs> his textured <laughs> pei belly. it's not a dog and then one of the things that, that are super cool about it is just the way that the links for the uh, all of the hinges work. Excellent. Sure. There was nothing that I had to change for the uh, tolerances. I uh, just scaled it up to 200%. Yeah, there was like split rings here. Yeah. Yeah, they work really well. With a little Fantastic work. detail. So let's take a look at the... Uh, oh, and he goes into a shell. I really like the way that the uh, cavity for this is uh, carved out of there. Yeah. Something like that. And I just used tack to hold it in when I did some pull shots. Come on, browser. I'm trying to pull up the uh, Colts 3D site and uh, the designer's name here. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not a free print, but oh, I just okay. thought it was so cool. I it's think so cool. it's like a dollar. Yeah, something. support support some cool stuff. Support uh, the designers. So, oh, I wish we could have gone to the beach and got some shots like this. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, scaling wise, it's the yeah, right 200 percent uh, bigger, and. Uh, yeah, no tolerance changes. He, I think he did this in ZBrush because there's excellent textures on it. It's okay. just very nice. Definitely worth uh, paying a buck. For this excellent uh, print. Disin. Yeah. Is their their handle here on Colts 3D? Mm -hmm. Disin. And uh, yeah, support them. It's uh, two bucks. Not bad. Yeah, we usually try to do. <laughs> I'm looking at the Discord here. People <laughs> posting those giant. Uh, Ooh. Coconut crabs, right? There. Whoa! Oh, those like those Japanese uh, spiders are like huge. <laughs> oh, it's in Discord. Let me go there. Oh, Andy Callaway, what is that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a coconut crab. <laughs> yeah. Nobody will touch that garbage. <laughs> That's a great way to keep hands off. Right. Uh, cool. Last my train of thought of what I was saying. I guess. Yeah, flexi print, flexi print, crab, uh, descent, modeled in ZBrush. Excellent. Uh, like textures and just the model uh, overall. Yeah, very, very cool. So cool. Uh, I'll up in the uh, sun. It. Yeah. It did get a little bit of water, but it dried out and evaporated. Yeah. And uh, there's the cavity in there. So this was printed into pieces and you printed them at the same time, I think, huh? Mm -hmm. These two. Yeah. yeah. And you can't, if you were to pop this open in half, it would break the, the buckle. Probably. Match. Probably. Yeah, that's why I've been attempted. Okay. And this was all. Um, the the print right it wasn't um, another print, hmm. like it's the print that was in the time lapse. Like, yeah, no, we yeah. have to print it again because like it, no, this is lapse. yeah, this is it. Yeah. Okay, there's only a little bit of string in that. Uh, it was very easy up. to clean up. Yeah, and then I'm uh, getting the kick out of all the uh, gifs that people oh, post in the Discord with all the crabs. <laughs> all the crab dancing, <laughs> crabby. All right, that's this week's uh, community makes. Unless uh, we have any more from the repositories. Yeah, we do. We have a couple of uh, community makes that I crap. This uh, speaking of Colts 3D, we got our first make I think on Colts 3D. Normally, I didn't know you could even do makes, huh. but this is the Guardian robot from a couple years ago. Um, I think they remixed it. It says bottom hey. remix, so I guess maybe they remixed it for a different component mm -hmm. or something. It looks like there are LEDs in the feet now. Wow. Oh snap! That oh. looks great. Didn't I do that originally in the feet? Yeah, I think I did do that. I did, oh. but I it, things didn't. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, but that looks great. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> party crab partner for party parrot. Yeah, the crab and the guardian robot should get together. <laughs> like, hey, I need legs doing? for it. I got limbs. You got limbs. What's <laughs> up? That's an awful pickup line. Any hoodle? Yeah, it looks great. We got another one. One more make. 
This is uh, Pyro. I forgot Shop Talk. We'll do Shop Talk after. Don't forget Shop Talk, Shop Talk. Mm. Oh, we got five minutes. Good. What happened? It didn't work? I didn't copy the link right. Just one more. Bear with me. Ooh. Yeah, because just the delay on that click mm. is like awful. How's our audio? Is it still running? Yeah. So this is the 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 Pi Girl Two build using the Raspberry Pi something, um, and this was uh, kind of a complete redesign because uh, the fellow wanted um, Tyson G wanted uh, an HDMI connector mm. uh, somewhere else, hmm. so he took it on upon himself to take the the original CAD source and like re remix it, which is really cool to see. Um, this is one of the most mod modded projects that we've come out with, like. We made it very kind of like basic, mm -hmm. and then folks add yeah. speaker mods, mm -hmm. um, switches, extra buttons, all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice model here, or remix rather, of uh, all the stuffs. Yeah, it's quite a build though, but uh, always always fun to see. Really, really nice build. And of course, we play Pokemon, which is great. The red version. So check that out. And. Um, Tyson has a nice write-up here of, of uh, his contributions to it. Also used XTC, which I haven't used in a minute. Oh, yeah. So that's why it looks so shiny and clean. Very nice. That version there looks more shiny and clean. Kind of gives it a little bevel here. Looks pretty cool. Remember doing that? And you get like, yeah. this extra bevel. Mm -hmm. Bevel. I like Anyways. the um, infill. How you're able to yeah, see the infill that pattern. There. Looks dope. Yeah. Looks like you used like, one, uh, one top. Mm -hmm. No bottom, yeah, maybe like kind of translucent. Very, very cool. Excellent, so, love it. Very great. You know what we should do is we print. You should use that cheat. Uh, the what's that new filament? Mm, the chinchilla, chinchilla, chinchilla for all the buttons. Yeah, that would, look, that would feel much better. But anyway, that's this week's community makes. Thanks everybody for posting their stuff. Really appreciate it. And that's funny. Our, our video is really small. <laughs> uh, I had another thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yesterday, um, shout out to Alex from. Uh, Hackster.io, we yeah. did a, uh, a little uh, kind of hack chat, chat on, yeah, a little some chat of the on some of the projects and some background story stuff. So if you want to hear a little bit more about some of the things, um, you can check it out. It's on the Hackster.io channel, and I'll have a blog post going out on Thursday um, for it. And thanks for everybody who tuned in live. It was yeah. really fun to do. Alex is an awesome person to chat with, so shout out to her. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. And then uh, real quick, before I forget... Or was it somebody was suggesting to redo? Uh, Armin VP is suggesting to redo the Featherwing project as Falcon Wings. Yes, that is such a good idea. <laughs> we got to do some Falcon Wings. Can we do or, it I'm for sorry, the baby? Some Captain America. <laughs> Can we do wings. it for your baby? <laughs> yes, a little baby Falcon. Yeah, ah, Captain America. Oh, okay. Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon America. <laughs> got it. Cool. He's going through the cool. chat. Yeah. All right, cool. I think that's going to do it. Cool. We are one minute from 12. Excellent. Well, tonight we invite you to come on to Show and Tell. It's at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then Lamar and Phil will do Ask an Engineer at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune in for new products, uh, news in open source hardware, and some, maybe some rants, and uh, some news in... in um, I think there's a couple. It might be something to do with the space. Mm, a space so rant. Definitely we got some space. What is it? Space Keepers? <laughs> we'll talk space, all about the Space, space keepers. keepers. Whoa. So tune in for, for all that juiciness. Um, this is a pre-COVID photo, but hopefully maybe this year we'll be able to do this again. Yeah, and, there's uh, light at the end of the tunnel. The, this indeed. week we'll have our second shot. A lot of the people in the office have already received their second doses. Yeah. Uh, I think Phil and Lamar were in the office yesterday. They're starting <gasps> to plan Will they be out. on the office today? Like, maybe. maybe. you got to tune in office, to find out. you got to tune in to find out. I don't know. I, yeah, I think, think so. Uh, Fourth of July is what they're aiming at to be the first company to you know, get together, of course, with all the social distancing and all that. If everybody's vaccinated, so yeah, we are right at the end of this. Feel it, everybody. Yeah, go, go get your go get your shot if you can, please. Yeah, yeah. we need a banner. It's just like I got the shot. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we hope you, we see you folks tonight on uh, show and tell, and maybe we'll host next week because it's the end of the month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So check it out. And then tomorrow will be Jump Park, Jump Park Workshop, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. Looking at some more home automation projects, I think, for the Fun House. So that should be awesome. Yep. And then Fridays, deep dive with Scott. 
some uh, some deep dives with Scott. So yeah. Python, all the deep dives on. Uh, I think it's it's more BLE work. Uh, what was it? the PyLeap uh, app yeah. that Trevor's working on for sure. Might look at some of that, and I guess some general uh, chit chats on all of the weeds that go into making Circuit Python. Excellent. And then on Sunday, Sunday is Desk of Lady Ada. It uh, features a uh, great search, DigiKey. Mm -hmm. So it should be some cool components that are used in our products that you can uh, add to your very own. All right. That's going to do it for us. We will see you tonight on the show and tell. But until then, we hope you make a great day. Right? See you later tonight, folks. Bye.